high fidelity. What's it cost to invest with the Fidelity app? Start with as little as $1 with no account fees or trade commissions on U.S. stocks and ETFs. Hmm, that's music to my ears. I can only talk. Investing involves risk, including risk of loss. Zero account fees apply to retail brokerage accounts only. Sell order assessment fee not included. A limited number of ETFs are subject to a transaction-based service fee of $100. See full list at fidelity.com slash commissions. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. Member NYSE SIPC. Do you ever watch TV and think, wow, I'm really good at this? You're right. With Rewards on Sling, watching 30 minutes of TV daily gives you chances to win up to $10,000 in cash and other monthly prizes. Sign up for Sling or stream for free with Sling Free Stream to get rewarded for watching TV. Sling lets you do that. Visit sling.com slash rewards to learn more and get started. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. Visit sling.com slash rewards slash official dash rules for more details. What is up, AFK fam? It's your boy, Nina. And wow, what a season it has been. We've wrapped up season one of the AFK podcast. And today, taking a trip down memory lane from unforgettable guest interviews to epic solo episodes, we've covered a ton of ground. So let's dive into the highs, the surprises, and everything in between. How has my overall experience of season one of the AFK podcast? I mean, I got to say that shooting these and like having a lot of this added re- added responsibility on top of, um, you know, my everyday life and streaming and, you know, spending time with Jess, et cetera. Um, and, and honestly working around the incredible schedule of all of my amazing guests and stuff has been, it's been on, it's been like pretty taxing, right? Like in terms of, you know, I mean, no matter what, it's just how I am. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know how to get how to really get out of my own head. Obviously, like I've loved, I've loved all of my interviews, um, and every single guest I've had on here has been spectacular. Um, and I've had you know incredible moments and conversations, and you know, I've laughed, I've you know been emotional and stuff like that. So like I've I've loved every minute of that, but like the so a lot of the solo episodes and like. It's just I don't know. I have I haven't had this cra- I haven't had this crazy drive to kind of hop on and just like talk with myself, right? It's um it's a lot easier to just be able to banter off of, you know, back and forth off of one another but be able to, you know, I'm only opening up as much as I want to open up in these, right? And like you can kind of get in the groove and get in a vibe with somebody, but like each time I recorded a solo episode, like it was different. Right, like like how I, how I felt was different. Um, how much I opened up was different. How deep I wanted to go and and more in depth in these answers and questions and like chatting is was different. Um, but I was always very consistent and very like passionate and excited about like doing interviews with and get and having guests on the show. Um, I do like getting to know new people and obviously like. There's a lot that I've learned from having, you know, from some of the guests, um, you know, just different outlooks coming from different backgrounds and passions and stuff. So I think looking back at the, at the season, at season one, like I think finding a way to enjoy recording solos more going into season two is going to be something that we're keeping in or something that I'm going to try to be, be mindful of, whether that be like, we keep them shorter and kind of just more of like a, like a Q and a, like, you know, maybe like talk about one specific thing. Um, kind of like a, like what's on the mind of, of Tyler or what's on the mind of Ninja, et cetera, something like that. I don't know. Right. Or like describing and explaining specific experiences. It's kind of like clips. Um, but overall, uh, an incredible season one. And, um, I mean, I know no, none of them are going to hear this, but just a massive shout out to every single guest and person that took the time to come on here and share their story with me and just talk about their lives and, you know, advertise things that they, you know, they had going on and whether or not they joined for certain reasons. It, I, I, I loved each and every one of my guests on the show. It was phenomenal. 
All right, who are some of my favorite interviews from this season and why? Ooh. It's a tough one. Honestly, I mean, first off, let's just say every single one of them. Every single person that was on, like, I... I truly don't think that I, like, freaked out about one more than another. After every single person I had on the podcast in the first season, I I, I would, like, come upstairs, I would talk to Jess, because I would always talk to Jess beforehand and be like, honey, I'm super nervous. <laughs> like here we go. And then I would always come back after that, after every single guest and just be like, they were so amazing. That was so incredible. I had such an amazing time. Like that was such an easy, like easy recording. The hour flew by. That was pretty much how every single episode went with my guests. I would have anxiety and then I would go in and it would be incredible. So, um, every single guest that I had, it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing and I wouldn't have, uh, Taken one away or, or added another uh, for this season. Uh, how do the solo episodes feel compared to the guest interviews? I think I kind of got into that already. Um, I definitely did explain this already. And how was my overall experience? It was a lot easier to do the guest, uh, the guest interviews, all in all, like in the long run, because I think I enjoyed it more and I was able to let loose a little bit more and kind of open up more. And again, like the solo episodes really are you know, how I'm feeling and what I want to share that day, right? Like how deep I want to go. Um, so, and, and you know, it's just easier, I think. The guest episodes are, are, are easier. You would think the solo episodes are easier because all I need is myself, right? I just hop in, hit record, talk into the mic, you know, kind of follow the palette we've laid out and, right, like the, the theme of the episode that we want to go. But like, you know, sitting and kind of, because at the end of the day, right, see, I'm basically sitting here having a conversation with myself and it's just weird. It's hard to get over it. Um, no chat to interact with, right? It's basically the exact opposite of streaming. Everything that I've done for the, you know, the last 12 years of my life um, where I can kind of riff back and forth and, you know, maybe read a message, right? Read a comment and that comment makes me open up a little bit more because it maybe struck a, not struck a nerve, but, you know, I relate to it. So, um, solo episodes definitely felt different. Definitely, if we, you know, season two happens, I want to find a way to perfect the solo, the solo angle, right? Because I, I obviously have so much, I feel like I, it's a great time and a place for me to like give a lot of my opinions and, and offer advice in certain ways. Because like when I'm doing interviews with guests and I'm chatting, like I don't really talk about like me as much and that's not a problem. Um, but Uh, what were some of the most memorable moments of season one? I mean, I got to say, <laughs> it's funny. I got to say the most memorable moments of season one were like the beginning, like super early on. I thought we had it down. I thought we had exactly what the show is going to be about, right? The show is going to be about, um, cause you know, we had Jordan Fisher and Cypher PK and Courage Shady, right? Like I wanted to start off with just some bangers, right? Some guests that I knew. We can talk about games and reminisce. And I was like, this is exactly what the show is going to be about. It's going to be like retro. We're going to be talking about old school games. You know, uh, our experience with video games growing up, like uh, nostalgia, right? Like that was, that was, that was like what I thought. Like I was so confident. I was like, this is exactly what it's going to be about. Um, like just all nostalgia. It's going to be lit. And then it ended up being completely the opposite, basically, where, you know, once we kind of burned through all of the guests that we had on originally, like all my gaming guests, it was like, okay, well, guess what, Tyler? Like now <laughs> we have other guests. Uh, here's an actor, right? Who's never played a video game ever before. And it's like, and, and you know, and you're, you just go, you know, and you just, and it's like, oh, uh, yeah. And then you, you know, it, there's nothing about nostalgia and we just talk about, you know, life and their history and you know their profession and, and, and it you know it definitely starts out as an interview then definitely moves past that most of the time but yeah the most memorable moment from season one for me was was thinking i had it all together and i had the plan laid out at the beginning uh and only to find out that it was completely flipped on its head Do you ever watch TV and think, wow, I'm really good at this? You're right. 
With rewards on Sling, watching 30 minutes of TV daily gives you chances to win up to $10,000 in cash and other monthly prizes. Sign up for Sling or stream for free with Sling Free Stream to get rewarded for watching TV. Sling lets you do that. Visit sling.com slash rewards to learn more and get started. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. Visit sling.com slash rewards slash official dash rules for more details. It's the big sale at Half Price Books. Get almost everything for an extra 20% off this Labor Day weekend. Whether you're on the hunt for collectibles, comics, music, or movies, you're sure to find a little something new or used at your local Half Price Books. Save big with 20% off. Saturday, August 31st through Monday, September 2nd, in-store at your local Half Price Books and shop millions of titles on sale at hpb.com. Offer cannot be combined with other coupons. Exclusions apply. Uh, how does podcasting compare to streaming in terms of preparation and execution? So how I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. There are a lot of people and a lot of streamers out there that put a lot of preparation and execute certain streams very well. Almost every single stream, every single stream is prepared. Um, and every single streamer is different. Uh, I can I can honestly safely say that for the last couple of years, I've had zero preparation for any of my streams. It's, we're playing Fortnite today, I'll see you there, right? We're going to grind games, maybe play some ranked, maybe like some of my friends will get on and we'll play with them. But like, it's been very relaxed, not relaxing, that's not the right word. Um, it has not been, yeah, yeah, no preparation at all, right? The execution has just been me literally showing up, show up, start the stream, get it going. Um, and that's not the same for the podcast, right? Podcasts, especially my solo episodes, I read and the, and the guest episodes. Like I, I look at the document that I have in front of me, right? The theme of what we're going to be talking about and chatting about and some of the questions that I'm going to be asking um, guests and, and things like that. And uh, I'll, I'll do a little bit more research if I'm not comfortable and, you know, with my guests. And as for me, like, you know, I just kind of generally get, you know, my head wrapped around what I'm going to be chatting about. Um, so I don't just go in there completely blind. And the solos with that require obviously less preparation because I'm not nervous going in and recording by myself. So um, I would just say all in all, yes, like the, the, there's there's a difference and there's a lot more preparation and execution going into the podcast when I have my guests because I want to be prepared. I want, yeah, I want them to waste their time or feel like they've wasted their time um, and be able to just, you know, make them feel good and happy that they came on. Um, and you know, I don't want to say, I don't, I never want to say anything stupid. It's one of my biggest fears as a streamer. I, I, I've done it before. Like having, playing with someone you've never played before, whether it be a celebrity um, in their own, you know, world, or even like a person that you've never played with before, like a gamer, another gamer or streamer and saying something that is just awkward or sensitive topic, right? Like I don't ever want to have a gotcha moment where I like ask something like a super loaded question and I never have. So we're one for one uh, in terms of not pissing off a guest in the first season. Uh, what is next for the AFK podcast? Any exciting plans for season two? I mean, we're, we're obviously talking about it. Um, and I think, you know, I think this is probably what everyone's wanted. So like, if we are going to move forward with the season two, like we've talked about it. And at the end of the day, right? Like I love audio only. The reason I wanted to do audio only was I'm on camera every day of my life and I would love to just not be for a minute when I do something. But at the end of the day, audio only podcasts in today's day and age, like I'm not getting new listeners, right? And and getting people to listen to a clip or see a clip from an audio, audio podcast is just difficult and it's not as attractive or appealing as the clickable... Um, and appealing visually like of, of a video podcast. So there are a couple of things that we've decided. If we do a season two, it'll more than likely be video. Whether that means that we'll develop a studio and have the person actually like there with us and in the room is a whole nother story because that requires, you know, a lot more planning and 
you know, I am very much not trying to do that. All right. Like not, not the planning, but having people like show up at the studio and where would it be? Right. Cause we live in Florida and a little weird spot. Like nobody really lives in Northern Florida. Um, it's not easy to fly into. That's another thing. That's an issue. It's not like it's in Miami. Like we're 10, 15 minutes away from the Miami airport or something like that. So like people traveling to us would be difficult. I'm not going to go somewhere and set up my stuff there and then start recording there. Um, cause I'm not trying to drive an hour or two hours to, to, to have a guest there. So it would probably be video. Um, that also kind of sucks too. Cause you know, I dude, then we're going to have to have tech checks. 99% of, of people uh, truly just every celebrity that isn't a video, uh, isn't a gamer is just not, they're not, they're not on the computer. They're not on the computer. They're not a camera works on mic microphone works webcam, right? If they do know how it works, it's usually low quality and, um, it's just yeah, a whole lot of moving parts. So lots to figure out with uh, AFK Podcast Season 2. Uh, were there any surprises or unexpected challenges during Season 1? Mm. I mean, really, not really. Not really. I don't think there were any crazy surprises or challenges for that matter. Like, I think that, you know, we had the chance to get some incredible guests on and sometimes like those, those got moved because, you know, they were either replaced with other guests or other guests had to cancel or, you know, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, it, it was, you know, I was never upset. I was never offended. And it was a, yeah, it was a very, very smooth sailing season one, in my opinion. Uh, will I, uh, well, here we go. Will I include video components for the podcast in the next season? Why or why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. There'll be video, more video components, more webcams, or, you know, even in person, because at the end of the day, it's just, it's just how, it's how you're going to get the, the, the show to grow, people to click on it, um, you get the visual, visuals of these professionals, um, you know, in their class that are just obviously talented and like people can see them and it's just more, it's more attractive, right? So, it's looking good uh, if we're going to do a season two. That there will be more video components involved. Who are some dream guests I'd love to have on the show in the future? Yeah, okay. So he was supposed to be on this, this, and I think I canceled on him or like something came up and I had to move it. But Cody Christian, the voice actor of Cloud Strife, would love to get him on for the second season. I, I had an opportunity to do it on the first season. I choked. Um, I'm 99% sure that one's on me. So I super apologize. But obviously, I feel like he was absolutely incredible um, in his role. I also loved him in... Uh, I forget. It's not, it's not called Friday Night Lights. It might be called Friday Night Lights. I don't even remember what it's called. But they just finished their last season. He was great on that. Um, I feel like there's no one else that could have done his voice better for, for the game. It's like perfect for it. So just someone who I admire. And uh, yeah, would love, to, would love to have him on it again or, um, you know, for the season two. And then obviously... Jensen Ackles, Jared Padalecki, two of my favorite actors from uh, the Supernatural series. Uh, I love them very much. They're amazing. Love to have them on. Dude. Building a business may feel like a big jump, but on-deck small business loans can help keep you afloat. With lines of credit up to $100,000 and term loans up to $250,000, OnDeck lets you choose the loan that's right for your business. As a top-rated online small business lender, OnDeck's team of loan advisors can help you find the right business loan to fit your needs. Visit OnDeck.com for more information. Depending on certain loan attributes, your business loan may be issued by OnDeck or Celtic Bank. OnDeck does not lend in North Dakota. All loans and amounts subject to lender approval. It's the big sale at Half Price Books. Get almost everything for an extra 20% off this Labor Day weekend. Whether you're on the hunt for collectibles, comics, music, or movies, you're sure to find a little something new or used at your local Half Price Books. Save big with 20% off. Saturday, August 31st through Monday, September 2nd, in-store at your local Half Price Books and shop millions of titles on sale at hpb.com. Offer cannot be combined with other coupons. Exclusions apply. What was the biggest lesson 
I've learned from doing this podcast. Mm. Honestly, I think it's just, it, this is about anything. This is about life. Everything in life is the same concept where the more nervous I was, it usually meant it was like the less I knew about my guest or like the least prepared I was. Right. So I think I was more nervous for guests that I had no idea who they were, not who they were, no idea. Like it was just like, I knew, I knew where they were from, but that was it. Right. Like nothing else. Right. Like not their hobbies, not how old they are, not where they live. Like just like, I always had this fear that I would be like, Hey, welcome to the show. You know, where are you from? And they're like, you don't know where I live. You know what I mean? Or something like that. Or like, you don't know where I'm from. Like everyone knows where I'm from. And then I'm like, a uh, uh, foot and mouth moment. Like, oh shit. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, yeah. Not, I don't really know who you are. Like that's one of my biggest pet peeves. I hate when people say that shit to me. Um, right. Like, they, oh, oh, everyone else is taking a picture of you. I'd love to get one too. I don't know who you are. Right. Like I don't want them on the show just because they're accomplished. I obviously want to respect what they've done uh, and know of them. And I do. Um, you know, I approve the list of people that I'd be interested in, in, in like, and as well as genres. Um, but the more preparation I did about them and the more I learned about not just like what I know them from, but what other people know them from, um, whether it be guests, actors, uh, I'm sorry, actors is mostly actors, right? Like I usually always knew my artists. I went, I would always listen to the most recent album of, um, and older albums of any, you know, musicians. So, you know, I knew, I knew more about them, more about their, their, you know, just where the, you know, where they came from, the better I felt, right? I was more nervous, the less I knew about the guest. So, and that's about life, right? Like, dude, like uh, when I'm the, le- it's like a test, you're nervous for a big test because it's like, well, you're probably nervous because you didn't study and you feel unprepared, right? The more prepared you are, the better and more confident you're going to be in that situation. Um, and I've done that before, right? I've gone into a test feeling confident because I actually took the time to study for the first time ever, right? I never studied when I was a kid. It's the same thing with with guests, right? Study, know your guests, know know what's going to piss them off, and don't do that, right? Know that if they're in a controversy or you know they had something that was controversial that happened, not to fucking bring it up because they don't want to talk about that, right? Or you know, it's like you don't talk about something unless they bring it up. Um, because I've been streaming mine, you know, for a very long time. And, you know, I've been clickbaited by my chat to be like, yo, ask him about, ask him how this person's doing. Uh, and it, it's like, you know, you ask and they're just like, yo, what the fuck did you say? And you're just like, uh, uh never mind. So be prepared. And the more prepared you are, the less nervous you'll be uh, for anything, right? Very exciting. Good to do that. I mean, I've been doing that more and more uh, like lately, even the last month I've been planning more, actually adding things into my calendar, my schedule. So I don't get like taken by surprise. Um, and I've actually found that a lot of my anxiety has been, has come from me. Like I thought about like what was helping my anxiety was not knowing, right? Like not knowing what I have planned the next day so that I can just kind of wake up and then be like, Oh, I got to do this. Okay. You know, so I don't dread it the next morning or I dread it the night before. Like, Oh my God, when I wake up, I have to do this. But, I found that it's the other way around and that I need to be more like aware of my plans so that I can be prepared for it and less nervous. All right. How have my fans and listeners responded to the podcast and how has the feedback shaped the show? I mean, here's the good news is I haven't heard anyone complain about it. Right. And again, I feel like a lot of people who are listening to the show are fans and like any extra content of me that they can get, they'll usually love. But like, yeah, I didn't have any, I didn't really hear any criticisms. You know, every time a new episode came out, whether it be a solo or it it was a guest episode, you know, great feedback from people. Like, I feel like the ratings on the podcast are great. Um, From what I was told, the the read through, read through, the listen through is like, is like 300% like better than like most people's podcasts. So like when people listen to my podcast, they finish it more than others. Whether that means we have millions of listeners or not is irrelevant. It means that people that are listening want to hear and and see and usually see through the rest of the episode or the, or the whole show and the whole podcast. So like, you know, there's obviously a lot of good to take away from this. And I think that we could have 
you know, in the first season, blown this up more and had and had a lot more, you know, viral clips and moments had we gone more of a video route. And again, I think that that's one of the main things that I've taken away from podcasting is that video is king. Um, and I think it always will be. So in the future, if we do do a season two, yeah, there's going to be some some changes, but you know, changes for the better because of course you don't have to watch someone's podcast. You can still just download it and listen to it. Um, even though it is video, but yeah, that's it. That's how we do it, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into the special season one recap of the AFK podcast. It's been an incredible, incredible journey and we're just getting started. Remember, please, to like, share, follow for more epic content. Stay tuned for season two. And as always, keep on gaming and stay awesome. Building a business may feel like a big jump, but on-deck small business loans can help keep you afloat. With lines of credit up to $100,000 and term loans up to $250,000, OnDeck lets you choose the loan that's right for your business. As a top-rated online small business lender, OnDeck's team of loan advisors can help you find the right business loan to fit your needs. Visit OnDeck.com for more information. Depending on certain loan attributes, your business loan may be issued by OnDeck or Celtic Bank. OnDeck does not lend in North Dakota. All loans and amounts subject to lender approval. It's the big sale at Half Price Books. Get almost everything for an extra 20% off this Labor Day weekend. Whether you're on the hunt for collectibles, comics, music, or movies, you're sure to find a little something new or used at your local Half Price Books. Save big with 20% off. Saturday, August 31st through Monday, September 2nd, in-store at your local Half Price Books and shop millions of titles on sale at hpb.com. Offer cannot be combined with other coupons. Exclusions apply.